Hello, this video will just be some recommendations um, in regards to firstly Dr. Richard Carrier. This is a wonderful presentation where he goes into detail about Greco-Roman technology. Uh, well, the Greeks and the Romans again inherited from previous civilizations, but we have this uh, fantasy regarding ancient history and, and there is a concerted effort to diminish Greeks, Romans, Persians, Babylonians because it doesn't fit the narrative of this particular fantasy uh, in regards to these things. I think it's clear, I think it's uh, quite evident that if you want to research ancient history, you should begin where the records are and move backwards. Unfortunately, there is a, a religion to uh, look at certain parts of history, find where, where there, are, there are very limited records, insert some fantasy onto them and then sort of say, well, you have to prove uh, that my fantasy is wrong. That's not the way it works. If you have uh, what can be presented without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. This is the basis of of logic. And so I do believe that there is a lot to be discovered in our ancient past and our ancient history, but I thoroughly reject this concept that you can, uh, where there's an absence of evidence and then present a theory or not even a theory, not even a conjecture, it's a fantasy, and then say, prove me wrong. No, uh, those who call themselves researchers, quite frankly, should do their work, put some effort in, and then build backwards and work that way to reverse engineer history rather than uh, find a void and then insert any fantasy um, into it. Uh, in this particular lecture, which is based on evidence, and, and facts and records, he he points to the fact of uh, the, the the Romans again inherited knowledge from earlier civilizations, but they are on the verge of a major scientific revolution, very much as we were in in the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, and uh, things like the Antikythera mechanism, astronomy, and these are all the the liberal let's call the quadrivium, especially. Wonderful presentation based on fact, not on um, a, a fantasy. And again, I am very interested in looking and re-examining the ancient past, but I will not do it in a religious sense where I insert uh, any sort of conjecture on on top of that. I know people don't like that, but I'm not really <laughs> interested in what you what you like. I'm I'm interested in facts. Uh, another interesting channel, and I'll put the links in the description, is uh, Dr. Rule McLaughlin. Again, based on extant rec existing records proven records and then using that to create uh, well to examine uh, some sort of history as well especially Roman contact to places such as India so if you look up again these videos uh, not only were they from especially from Egyptian ports they were trading with India in a large in a actually in a massive sense uh, it was a part of a global system well, almost, you could say, a global system of trade. But as the Romans were trading with India, the Indians were also trading with Southeast Asia and moving on to China. He also details uh, the Chinese and Japanese and what they understood of the Romans and how close these two, these very very distant cultures were coming to together again. So, again, I'll put these links in the description. I think this is just, you know, let's, you know, let's begin with the records and move backwards to look at the ancient past rather than begin in the absence of information and then insert any fantasy and then say you no no you, no if you present a, a, a theory without evidence it can be dismissed without evidence it doesn't even need to be examined because there is nothing to examine where is your evidence and that's unfortunately the state of affairs is you know there's a lot of money uh, and 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 there's names to be made by people who do not understand ancient history, let's be frank, who, who have uh, very little diligence, uh, very little effort um, put into it, but they make, you know, God bless them, they make, you know, they make a good living out of fantasy. I choose, you know, I, that's not something I choose to do. Uh, I, I, yeah, and so these links will be in the description. These are just some of the entry points to look into the, the Roman history Roman technology and Roman science, which was part of an evolution. They didn't just pop out of the ground with this stuff. They were the, the heirs of previous civilizations. And so whether it's cutting stone, moving stone, what the Romans achieved, 
and what the usual suspects will say that the Romans could not do, but they actually did do. Again, it's the, the ev not even the evidence, the proof is there on what the Romans achieved, and they did not just magically appear out of the soil and do these things. They were part of a, a long tradition, and so... <laughs> I can, yeah. Only I, I really can only shake my head at the at the religious nature of of certain schools of thought. I wouldn't even call it. It's not even a school. It's a delusion. It's a fantasy. Um, if you present the evidence, I'll be willing. You know, uh, I'm going to do some other videos on some well uh, geopolymers and some other unanswered questions, which are based on at least some sort of evidence, as opposed to the there's another word to describe it, the fantasy, the, the, the quasi-religious nature which surrounds ancient history. And it's not just what you say, it's also what you do not include in your, in your theory which smashes the foundations on which a lot of this fantasy relies upon. So if you are, if you are genuinely interested, if you are truly consider yourself to be a, a you know, inverted in air quotes researcher uh, here's some points to uh, begin with and again this is recorded the evidence is quite clear it's not just about what the Romans wrote down about themselves it's also about what other civilizations recorded about them as well unless of course you this is all a great grand conspiracy to um, yeah well again it's, it relies on conspiracy that the Romans and the Greeks and the Persians were all, yeah, again, there was this, you know, thousands of years ago, they decided to create a conspiracy to conceal all this sort of stuff. I can only really laugh at that. Anyway, but again, please do watch. You can, again, take this evidence and then research it for yourself to look at it again. These people present the, the, the evidence and where they got it from and how they come upon their certain ideals and... I, you know, I my I tip my hat to those who do the research, who go to the effort and spend years and and invest their own money and and really really try very hard to ex to to study these things. And I turn my backside to those who will in, inject any sort of uh, you know con conspiracy theory. I'm a conspiracy theorist myself. I think it's a dirty word, but you know, any if as long as it's based on evidence, that's grand. That's something to worth be examined. But if if you do not have any evidence, if you only have a fantasy, well, I'm not going to pay attention to you. What can be proposed without evidence can be dismissed without evidence, and you are actually holding back the cause. That's to be blunt. Again. Those who present theories without evidence are the enemies of truth and reason and logic and of decency. And I don't, I, again, I do not consider you to be honest brokers. I do not consider you to actually be even decent people. I, do, I care not for your religion. I care only for facts and what can be proven. Otherwise, I could uh, insert Smurfs. And Smurfs did it all. Prove me wrong. Well, you can't, <laughs> because if, again, if something is based on evidence, you cannot prove a negative. And, and so in a lot of this alternative stuff, just replace their key words with the word Smurf. And what do they have? Nothing. And so please, <laughs> here's the evidence. Look, you know, it, it takes time. It takes some sort of rigor to, to in, inject these things. And these people have done the hard miles. They've done the hard work. And there are many commentators who have actually, you know, mysteriously gained popularity. It's really, oh my God, it's really shocking. And, well, you know, they haven't done the work. They actually use disinformation, misinformation, and a complete lack of research. You know, you cannot, if you want to prove a theory and you only look at those things which suit you and you ignore everything which does not suit your theory, well, you're not a researcher, you're not even really... You're not anything. And then they poo-poo academics. Well, come on. These guys are academics for a reason. Because they've, they're academic. They do research and they prove their research and they prove it by evidence, not by fanciful theories. So again, I'm just planting my flag in the soil. I am not 
part of your religion. I will not get down on my knees bef in front of your high priests. I, I, I have zero respect for that. I don't really... Yeah. So, that again, planting my, planting my flag. Give me evidence. Give me research. Give me something. But if you give me nothing, I will dismiss it with, with, with a wave of a hand. Because without evidence, you have nothing. That, the same argument will be said, I accuse someone of murder without evidence. You must prove your innocence. No, no, that's not the way that uh, logic and decency work. So again, please do watch these as an entry point. You can begin to uh, use these videos and, and, and test their evidence. And they have something to test. Uh, it's not a fantasy. And with that, have a good one.